You know, life is hard hitting, dangerous and unpredictable. And there's going to come a time in your life when you're going to face some serious difficulties, some pain, some adversity. But how you handle yourself in those situations will determine how much success you'll have in life. It's a choice to never give up, to push forward, to not let any, any other person's opinion matter of you, to bounce back when you've been beat down, to bounce back. They say your best days are ahead of you, but the truth is, man, is you're going to have to fight for some of those days. Because life is not fair. It's a battle of your mind. It's a battle of your heart. It's a battle of your will. It's a battle for your inner soul. Like you have to fight for your life. One of the things that I've learned is to not compare yourself to anyone. You focus on you. Don't focus on what other people are doing with their lives. You focus on you. You know, there's a lot of blamers out there. There's a lot of people who blame. There's a lot of complainers, people who complain, and that's their habits. And in a way, they perpetuate their pain. And that's like sucking on propane or wrapping your head, wrapping your head around round with cellophane or uh, being so scared of needles, but you work at a blood bank. It doesn't make any sense. Man, we got to turn on the brain. We got to activate the confidence game. It's time to reclaim so that you can say, this is how I overcame. Now, another thing that I've learned is to get rid of the useless noise in your head, those voices, to make silence your friend, to make silence your friend, so that you can hear the thundering voice of your intuition, because that voice, that gut, that intuition will lead you to your purpose in life, will lead you to the meaning in your life. But you got to let go of those noises and those those useless voices in your head. Your your family's going to put those uh, negative voices in your head. The, your friends are going to put negative voices in your heads. Movies, TV, uh, magazines, they're all going to tell you you're not good enough. And then your mind's going to play tricks on you. And you're going to start believing that you're not good enough, that you're not uh, smart enough, strong enough, uh, skinny enough, uh, tall enough, short enough, uh, enough. You're not enough. When in reality, you are enough. If you are your best version of your authentic self, you are enough. So, if you play the victim, and that's your identity, poor me, pitiful me. You got to let go and grow. You got to, you got to man up. You got to woman up. You got to say, you know, enough is enough because it's all right to play victim for a little while, but a lot of people like to play that identity, that victim for years. They unpack there and they live there for years and that's their identity. Let me tell you, victims that have been playing victim for a long time. Let me tell you, you need power, not pity. You need faith, not fear. You need courage, commitment, dedication, discipline, compassion, creativity, selflessness. You need these things. These things are within you. They're your inner wealth. But you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing. Courage. Let me tell you about courage. I met a 16-year-old young lady who came home from school one day and saw her dad stabbing her mother to death. And as she jumped in to try to stop the dad, the dad stabbed this daughter of his 28 times through the neck, through the wrist, through the chest, through the back, just stabbed her 28 times. And I asked her, what do you want to be in life, Molly? And she said to me, I want to be a nurse, Derek, because I can go in that hospital where I spent a year of my life learning to walk again and learning to live again. And every nurse and every doctor 
is going to come up and give me love. It's going to hold me, give me hug. That's courage to say, you know what? I'm going to move forward and I'm going to go help somebody else. Let me tell you about courage. A 14-year-old who I met that was trying to transition into a new life. She had been kept in an animal cage for a couple years in a dark basement, tortured, abused. And when I met her, she was very standoffish. Her walls were up. But when I finally connected to her, I said to her, because I focus on struggle, the solutions to success. It's all right to acknowledge the struggle. You just don't live in that struggle. You got to visualize to materialize. You've got to think about not what I'm going through, but where I'm going to. What's the end destination? And I said, what do you want to be in life? And she said, her name's Cynthia. She says, I want to be a United States soldier because she wants to be a hero. Let me tell you about courage. I met a 12-year-old girl in Canada that after my event, she came up to me and says, Mr. Clark, I want to be like you, a motivational speaker. And I saw a couple cuts on her wrist. And I said, let me, sh let me see your wrist. I counted 80, 83 cuts on this wrist, 23 cuts on this wrist. And I said, you want to be a motivational speaker? I bet every single cut of yours has a story. Now it's time for you to accumulate stories of hope how you've helped other people excel. Hope, helping one person every day. Hope, 